So the pull up. A fundamental calisthenics exercise and arguably the best exercise out there for building your back and pull strength overall. But despite it being a fundamental, many people struggle with it, which is why in this video I'm detailing a full system, a full step-by-step -step beginner guide for how to achieve your first ever pull up. Sure, there are a bunch of exercises out there and people saying, oh, you could use this variation and that variation, but unless you have a proper system and plan built around it to facilitate growth and to facilitate you working and progressing towards that first pull up, it's not really gonna happen, now is it? So yeah, in today's video, everything you need from start to end on how to achieve your first pull up, starting off with exercise selection. All right, so first and foremost, you need to be able to hang from the bar. If you're not able to hang, you won't be able to do a pull-up. Simple as that. So we've got two hanging variations. First is the dead hang, simply you grabbing a hold of the bar and dangling around. And second is the active hang. So this would be you having active shoulders and scapulas, meaning that you depress your shoulder blades and scapulas and that you retract them. So think pinching something between your shoulder blades and bringing your shoulder blades closer together, right? Think about holding your wallet up or a coin or something in between your shoulder blades as you have this depressed and retracted set of scapulas in this or activated as it's called position. The way I like to think about it, hanging is a great, like dead hangs are a great exercise for building your grip strength and for generally becoming more comfortable with hanging from the bar. And the active hang is great for building scapular ability. Scapular ability can also be further developed with this next exercise, and that is gonna be scapular pull-ups. Now, being able to develop proper scapular ability is really important for your pull-ups, but also for other exercises within calisthenics and for being able to move properly, just generally. Now, moving up from this, the next exercises are gonna be Australian pull-ups and rows. The way I like to think about it would be that Australian pull-ups are more vertical in nature, whereas rows are more horizontal. So when you're doing your Australian pull-ups, think about you being more vertical and you have a set of rings or the bar in front of you and you wanna be doing sort of a rowing movement. The further your legs are out in front of you, the further they're away from your chest and your head, the more difficult the movement will be and also the more horizontal you will be, which is why we start off with Australian pull-ups, then move on to rows, specifically rows with bent legs, or bent knees, and then you progress into rows with, with straight legs, so you have more load on, on your arms, and then rows with elevated legs even. The next exercise after this is something that people discuss way too little within whether it's calisthenics or the fitness community at large. Very few people talk about this and that is isometric holds. Isometric holds are absolutely phenomenal for building raw strength and especially for those of you that want to build strength without necessarily building size. I mean, sure, it's not like you'll do a couple of sets of a good exercise and, and then you'll suddenly have bulked up to like a good couple of kilos of pure muscle heavier or stuff. But it is a good way to, to build raw strength without necessarily stimulating too much hypertrophy, which some people do have as a go. So for the isometric holds, what you want to do is that you want to go up to the pull-up bar and you want to lock in, for example, a 90 degree angle, and you want to simply just keep that position. So in the beginning, this might be a bit difficult. And because of that, you might either use a resistance band that is looped around one of your legs or both of them for assistance, or simply a chair underneath you. So you put the chair underneath the pull-up bar, you stand on the chair, and then even if you can't hang from your arms by themselves just yet, you want to keep your arms on the bar and you want to activate, as we talked about earlier, you want to depress your, your shoulders and scapulas and retract them, and you want to think about pulling yourself up to the top of the pull-up. You want to exert yourself as much as you possibly can, and this is working those muscles they are using in the pull-up. Phenomenal exercise, and as you progress with this, don't worry, we'll talk about how to progress in a few minutes. As you progress with this, you want to start using less and less sort of leg strength and you want to put more and more of your weight into your arms until eventually you'll be able to just dangle freely. One progression that's nice for this is also like maybe you want to start out standing on your on your legs on the chair and then and then holding the position but as you get better with this you can curl your toes so you're standing on like your curled curled legs curled feet and that way you'll have an easier time putting more load into your arms. Also, a little side note about isometric holds, they're absolutely phenomenal for building, sure, like raw strength, absolutely. But the thing that's also great about them is that they have an area of effect that they do strengthen. So in addition to the actual angle you're using, they have plus minus 15 degrees, more or less, uh, range of motion. So what I would recommend for this is that you do isometrics at two particular angles. Sure, you could try out a few others, but the main ones I would absolutely utilize would be the 90 degrees and lockout. 
So same configuration as for the 90 degrees example with if you do the lockout, you stand on the chair or whatever have you underneath and you want to exert yourself maximum maximum uh, exertion on, on the bar there to, to really try to, to think about going for a pull up and locking it out. Now the next exercise is something that people talk way too much about, talk about it all over YouTube and that is banded repetitions. I'm not the biggest fan of banded repetitions but they do absolutely have a place on the list which is why I'm including them here. But the thing that's sort of problematic about them is that they help you the most at the bottom of the movement where, my, where people are the strongest. So when you start going up, you lose res you lose that assistance as the uh, as the band is getting less and less stretched out, and then you have less and less help for the actual part that people mostly struggle with. So for that reason, it's not a great exercise, at least not by itself. And that's how many people seem to promote it. So yeah, banded repetitions are absolutely useful for gaining more pull-up strength, but you need to have a certain baseline as well and there are other things you need to work with simultaneously. Now the last exercise are negatives, great exercise for building strength but it's important that you don't start doing these before you can do them properly. Properly meaning slow and controlled. If you're not able to slowly descend down from the bar you shouldn't be doing this. But this is also why the, the isometric holds are in the video in part right because isometric holds are a great sort of stepping stone to get to negatives. If you get if you're working the different 90 degrees and lockout, maybe a few other angles, you'll notice that oh, shit, you can just slowly like with time, over time, like after a couple of training sessions, couple of weeks, couple of months, you'll be able to slowly descend down without any problems. At which point you can start incorporating negatives more actively. All right, so that's quite a few exercises. So let me share how I sort of think about these in terms of different categories. I lay them out into three different types. Category one would be hanging. So you have your dead hangs, your active hangs, and your sort of scapular pull-ups. Things that really relate to grip strength, hanging from the bar, and building scapular ability. These are in the first category. Then for the second category, it would be different types of more full range of motion movements. So your Australian pull-ups, your row variations, and also your... Uh, your banded repetitions, your banded pull-ups, so these would all be in category number two. And the third and final category is what I like to call power builders, and this would include isometrics and negatives. Great for building strength, but you have to sort of ease into them, because for example with the negatives, the worst thing you could do is just start doing negatives when you're not really able to sort of do it, and you, you get up, you try to sort of lock it out for, for a half a second, not even that, before you just jolt down onto your shoulders and really mess something up. So not recommended at all, build it up over time, but you'll get there. All right, so with all the categories laid down, with all the exercises out there, how many repetitions do we do per set? Here I would say a good target would be to go for five to eight repetitions per movement where you have some actual movement happening and actual repetitions based. So your Australian pull-ups, your, your rows, your banded pull-ups, all of these five to eight reps would be my recommendation. And when it comes to things that are in terms of hold time, so isometric holds and negatives, I would aim for five to 10 seconds. If you're not able to do five to eight reps or five to 10 seconds, I would recommend going for a lower progression. But the most important thing, even if you cannot get fully five reps or six reps or seven reps, the most important thing here is just to have clean and proper form. Sure, if you wanna go for some lower reps, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going too low because when you're testing out newer and more difficult progressions, it's easy to sort of lose track of form and to have form, your, your form and technique deteriorate and that's really not beneficial at all. The most important thing is that you have good and proper technique. It's much more valuable to do a few repetitions and do them with proper form, do them with the proper muscle activation and have like the correct cues so you, your scapula is being depressed and your scapula is being retracted and you, everything's going smooth and you can feel your muscles working well and you know all of these things are in place and you have slow and controlled movement. That is much more valuable than you doing a bunch of repetitions of an exercise but with poor technique and you rush the movement and all of that. Because all of that, all that that's gonna lead to is you training the wrong movement pattern. So not only doesn't it really give you much benefits, but it'll also have an adverse effect in the sense that later on, if you actually want to do some proper work and get closer to your goal, you'll have to untrain and sort of unlearn the thing you initially taught yourself with the rush technique and, and, and poor form and all of that and then you have to teach yourself the right thing. So yeah, make sure the form is good. That is the most important thing I can say. And so in order to make sure you have good technique, good form, I mean, you could go into a lot of different niffy, iffy details, but the most important thing would simply be what I've already said, depress your shoulders and scapulas and retract them properly. 
throughout all of these movements and make sure like if you're struggling a bit like go slower like tempo like drop the tempo a little bit and focus on really feeling your muscles working you'll see great results all right then how much rest do you want to get between each set you have five to eight reps per per exercise per set or five to ten seconds if it's a nice metric order or a negative and how much rest do you have per one of those sets here I'd say two to four minutes is, is a pretty good number. Three seems to be the sweet spot, but there's some room for you know for personal experimentation. Whatever you feel like works for you, but I wouldn't recommend much lower than two, and much more than four wouldn't necessarily be needed. Although strength training, you'd, you'd rather go for a bit more rest than, than less rest. But yeah, three minutes is what I'd recommend starting with, and then you can sort of test it out from there. All right, so how many sets should you have, have per session, and how many sessions per week, and how much volume in total? I would keep it quite simple, 10 to 20 sets per week divided between two weekly sessions. So each session you do five to 10 working sets. And this I would divide in the following fashion, either two to three sets of three to four exercises or three to four, exercise, three to four sets of two to three exercises. You can invert the numbers a bit how you want and add a little set there or detract one here. It doesn't really matter too much, but this is pretty much a good ballpark to be in. And with this, we now want to keep in mind the categories from earlier on. And what I like to do is that each session you want to pick one exercise from each category and I mean it won't really be random right because you want to progress through all of these categories and you'll do so at different rates maybe right so you might be moving pretty steadily up through the rows but you might need a bit more time with the different isometrics or negatives or perhaps with the hanging right with your dead hangs your your active hangs or, or your scapular pull-ups so it will change a bit like the rate of improvement or the rate of progress will be a bit different from for all of the categories but for each session pick the current exercise you're at right now from each category that gives you three exercises maybe you want to do a fourth one from one of the categories it's up to you but yeah do each of those for two three sets and that would be a solid session if you want to divide this volume up into three sessions you could do so as well if you want to have a bit smaller sessions a bit more frequently throughout the week that is a possibility and if you haven't really done much strength training before and you want to sort of ramp it up a bit more slowly what you could do is that you could do the first month of like five sets per week then next month you do maybe seven or eight sets per week then 10 then 12 and then you sort of feel it out as you go all right so now we have a pretty good system and there's really only one thing missing and that is how do we actually progress there are pretty much two methods I like to recommend for how you could progress with, with pull-ups, whatever it might be, and that is either the Russian method or an incremental method. So for the Russian method, this is what I'd recommend for most of it, but with an exercise like the pull-up, especially in the beginning, you might get away with the incremental method, which I'll cover, cover next. But yeah, for the Russian method, you want to stick within a certain number of sets per exercise and a particular rep range and build gradually. So you start off, for example, if I'm now using rows as an example, right? You start off with rows with bent knees. You start with five reps per set and you do two sets. Wherever you are in your training, let's say just that's where you're currently at with the rows. This session, it was two sets of five rows. Next session, you want to do three sets of five rows. The next one after that, you want to build up to two sets of six rows per set. Then you want to do three sets of six reps per set. Then you want to do two sets of seven three sets of seven, then two sets of eight, three sets of eight, and at that point, you should be able to move on to straight legs. For some of you, this might seem like quite a slow way to progress, and, and I'll have some more, de some more details and some more examples in the guide below, but the main takeaway here is that this is a very reliable and, pro and, and good system for progressing gradually. Some of you, at least for certain exercises at certain times, might want to prefer the incremental method. So given your performance, not just a singular session, because that can vary quite a bit, like you have strength fluctuations and you have weight fluctuations and all of that. So I wouldn't just go out of last, last session's performance. But if you see over two, three sessions that, let's say you've been doing three sets of, of six reps of a particular row variation and you see that you're really strong, you can already then try to try to experiment with the next row variation, maybe for five reps or six reps again, five reps, four reps, you know, a bit lower on the rep side and perhaps only two sets rather than three. But then there is some room for you to to make these larger jumps and have the, uh, have the sessions be more guided by last week or the last two, three weeks performance as opposed to following a very strict system for for perhaps quite slowly growing or they're progressing quite steadily so here it's it's a matter of personal preference test it out i would recommend russian method for for the more 
more, more serious stuff. But once you start reaching reaching a wall and you're not really making that much progress anymore, for example, with the isometric holds, right? If you do like two, three sets of a particular of of the ninety degree ninety degree hold, maybe you do five seconds. Then the next session you go in and you do another hold of. Um, so three sets, three holds in total, or five seconds, then you build it up to six seconds, seven seconds. It's a nice way to sort of gradually build up the time and build up the reps and sets for the other exercises as well. Because here's something that many people don't factor in. You'll, you'll have a good couple of sessions, you'll be progressing quite nicely, but then suddenly you hit a point where weight fluctuations and strength fluctuations have superposed in this negative, both of them, where your weight is maybe a bit off from what it usually is, your strength is a bit weaker, and then you end up having a really tough session. And if you've been doing incremental system and you're just sort of all over the place a bit, then you might have a really tough session where you really struggle to hit last week's weight or you, whatever you're working on currently, right? Whereas the Russian method, you'll have some sessions where, where the weight or the exercise, the progression feels difficult, and some, some weeks where it feels easy, but you'll just stick to it, gradually improve, and that's how it goes. And there are also ways to use the Russian method and just have like a bit bigger gradual jumps if that's what you need. So that is what I would, rec would recommend for most, but who knows, maybe you, maybe you favor the incremental system and maybe that works better for you at least during certain periods of time. Also, another thing you wanna keep in mind when you're training for your first pull up is that you want to take some time to deload and rest from time to time. So every four to eight weeks, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit shorter, depends on the person, depends on the training and everything else. But every four to eight weeks, I will implement a week of recovery. So a week of rest, a deload week simply. And during this week, you would either go for uh, less intensity in your exercises, doing fewer fewer repetitions on the less loads, like earlier progressions. And um, yeah, just keeping it, keeping it light, keeping it easy, or just taking a week where you pretty much don't train for the pull-up at all. Personal preference, this as well, but I would say that when you do the deload is quite important, so four to eight weeks is quite a large room, but generally, if you have really, you notice that your training sessions are really intense, and that is superposed with you sleeping quite poorly, your diet being quite shit, then you might want to do a deload as often as every four weeks, whereas if you sleep really well, you eat really clean, and sure, your sessions are taxing, they're you know, they're, they're intense, but they're not really intense. Like you still have some energy left over or you're not completely burnt out from the sessions. Then you can do a training, uh, sorry, a deload week every every eight weeks even thereabouts. So yeah, deload every four to eight weeks, depending on how well you sleep, you eat and train. Pretty simple. All right, and that is the main meat and potatoes of the video. That is really how you progress with, with your pull-ups. Those are the exercises, the the reps, the the sets, the, the, the whole times, the, the rest times, all of it. That is what you need to progress with the, with achieving your first pull-up, basically. And now for some extra tips I think would be useful to anyone embarking on their journey, on the journey of unlocking their first pull-up. First is that your sessions don't really have to be that long. I mean, with 30 to 40 minutes, you can get plenty of work in. So don't worry, you have to spend 90 minutes, two hours, like have these monster sessions, because it's not really necessary. Sure, you want to have 30 to 40 minutes, maybe even a bit less, right? And you want to get in some proper intense and good sets and you want to work properly. But you don't need to be in the gym for hours and hours and hours in order to achieve your first pull-up. With that said though, within those 30 to 40 minutes, it's nice to include a warm-up and to include a cool-down. I mean, I wouldn't stress this too much. Whatever you can do to get the machinery working a bit, get your shoulders warmed up, get your spine a bit warmed up. It's not too important what exercise you do if I'm being completely honest, but if you do some shoulder rotations, some shoulder dislocates, some neck movements perhaps, get the spine going as well. And um, yeah, w whatever have you, some cat and cows to, to engage that scapular, scapular connection, some, some scapular pull-ups and simply some hanging, it would all be plenty good. If you can get in like five minutes of warming up before you, before you start your exercises and the main bulk of your workout, that would be great. And then for cool down, also not crucially important, but I mean, you could throw in some hanging. The better your the grip strength, and the longer you can hang from a bar, the more easily you'll achieve the pull-up once you get there. So it, it's worth throwing in and ha a set of hanging or two. But yeah, don't really stress it. Here for the cool-down, sure, it would be nice to have, uh, have some hangs and maybe some mobility drills. And uh, for the warm-up, simply whatever gets uh, gets you going a bit, right? Like whatever warms up the machinery, get the shoulders warm, get the spine a bit warm, and uh, and you should be ready to go. 
Also, I wanted to mention that the best way to improve our pull-ups is to do pull-ups. And that's how it pretty much applies to, you know, anything. Like, if you want to become good at football, the best way to do that is football. Sure, there might be great variations of this or that exercise or, you know, shoulder drills or this or that that you guys might be finding around around the web for how to, how to improve your pull-up or how to get your first one. But ultimately, it comes down to doing movements that are as similar as possible to the actual pull-up progressing through the exercises I've shown you, developing good scapular connection, developing the ability to hold a static position isometrically, uh, to slowly move through different um, difficulties of rows, all of these things to slowly get you closer to, to the actual pull-up. And same for like once you have the pull-up, like if you want to build several pull-ups, the best way to get good at them is to do those. Many would recommend the lat pull-downs and barbell rows and all of these variations, but if you want to become good at pull-ups, you do pull-ups or at least movements are as similar as possible. So keep that in mind as you're going through, as you're going through your training and as you're progressing. And also note that although this is a good system that will get you progressively closer to the pull-up, it will take some time, right? Like depending on where you are in, uh, on, on the journey right now, it might take a couple of weeks, might take a couple of months, but don't worry about it. Try to keep a sort of patient mindset and you'll get there sooner rather than later. It takes a bit of patience and it takes a bit of trusting the process, but you've got this, believe in yourself and you'll get there sooner than you know it. All right, so for those of you that made it this far into the video, I have a bit of a golden nugget, a bit of a golden tip that you guys can, can cling on to once you start closing in on the pull-up if you want to build real confidence with, with your pull-ups and, and to level up both of the number of, the number of pull-ups you can do and, and your overall pull-up ability. And I can't really believe that it's this simple, but so many people fail to do it because you get caught in the moment, you get excited by, oh, I've achieved the pull-up, now I want to start doing it. But the really basic thing I would keep in mind for once you achieve your pull-up is that the thing that you did, the program you had right before you got the pull-up, it worked. The exercises you did, the protocol, the number of times per week, yada, 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 all of that worked. That is why you achieved your pull-up. That's it. So rather than once you get the pull-up, like so many do with all exercises pretty much in calisthenics, you get an exercise, now it's like, oh, okay, how can I implement pull-ups into my routine? And now I want to keep doing them because they're an awesome move. But just hold on your horses for a second, right? And give it a couple more weeks, perhaps a couple of more months. And yet I know it might be annoying because you've just achieved this awesome skill, awesome movement, and you want to keep practicing it and you want to actually be able to do it. But you'll get there eventually, G. Just, just, just stick with me, right? Once you've achieved your pull-up, look back over your training the last two, three weeks prior to achieving the movement and keep up that protocol. Keep up that many sessions per week, keep up that many sets per session, same exercises. Sure, like in order to improve, you want to actually improve. So you want to have longer hold time, slowly build that up more, right? You want to build up the number of reps you can do of the exercises that you had prior to achieving it. But the point is that you want to keep the same protocol because it worked. Whatever tweaks you had or didn't have from from, from a general outline I, I gave earlier in the video, whatever worked for you, it worked. So keep it up because this way you'll build to two, three, four, heck even five reps on the pull-up without really changing up much. And at that point, sure, like once you do four or five reps of, of the pull-up, you can implement them more consistently into your training as they are. But until then, keep your head down and, and grind them out because this is a great way to build up the reps without doing some weird schemes of like, okay, you do this variation now and this, because that's a good way to, to achieve it. And then you start messing around too much and then you start losing your strength and you just start sort of trying to get it. Oh, I got it. Okay, now I'm going to implement it into my training, but you can't really do it properly to, to stimulate growth in, in, in the proper manner. And then you move like this a bit. So, um, so yeah, keep it simple. Once you get it, stick it out for a couple more weeks, even a couple more months. I know it's a bit boring. It's a bit sort of disheartening perhaps, like, but you've got the movement. Don't worry. Now it's like lock it in and get good at it. All right, and another little gold nugget for those of you that made it this this far into the video is that if you go down into the description, you'll see a link to a free PDF outlining all of this that I've talked about today. The four sort of pull-up guide, like all of the principles and the exercises, the different categories of exercises, how you want to progress through all of these, and basically how you want to go from where you are now to achieving the actual pull-up. So yeah, if you're interested in that, click that link in the description down below. And also, whilst you're down there, I've got a link to, to coaching that I've opened up now again. Because, yeah, for those of you that are particularly interested in levelling up your, your fitness, for those of you that want to dial in your, your pull-ups, your weighted pull-ups, 
your, your muscle ups, your, your one armors even, you've got some questions for the one armor or you've started embarking on that journey, whatever it might be, feel free to book a slot there on that link or share it with any friends that want to take their training properly seriously. And with that, thanks for watching the video. If you guys are interested in building proper scapular ability beyond what I've outlined in this video, you might be interested in watching this one that pops up on the screen right now. So consider giving that one a click. But without further ado, thanks for watching. And as always, remember to keep on training, train what you love. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.